Welcome back to Frost Education, this is Ed. Today, I'm going to be talking about BlackBerry. The ticker goes as BB. Now, today I'm going to give you a good amount of information about this one, what they do, operations, although this is a bigger company, so you probably already know that. And then I'm going to give you trends, more of a longer trends, and as well technical analysis and where I see it going in the next few days at least. So without further ado, let's jump right into this one. BlackBerry. This one here has been here for a while. Now, I owned a BlackBerry device when I was younger. I know much about BlackBerry, used their devices, used their technologies, BBM. There was a massive wave on that. But ever since then, it had a really prime period. It started a little bit stumbling. But recently, the stock share price has multiplied over uh, when you look year over year at least. So in, th in a sense, let's take a look into some of their latest news before we go on a bit more in depth. To get a bit of a taste on what they're doing that might have actually moved the stock a little bit higher or it could have just been relating towards AMC movement. So June 2nd, 2021, Baird's 2021 Global Consumer Technology and Services Conference. So on May 17th, BlackBerry built out extended detection and response XDR capabilities with new cybersecurity innovation. And they also had uh, bigger or more uh, further partnerships with the University of Waterloo in Canada. Now, other news are here and there relating to cybersecurity, innovations, technology, but what better way to explore all that through without the presentation? So on the presentation here, you're seeing that BlackBerry secures 96% and more of that of the enterprise threat landscape. So 70% of the companies allowed, allow BIOD, Human error is the cause of 90% of data breaches and 100 million pieces of malware are released every year. 90% of cyber attacks go unreported. 76% of enterprise have victims of phishing attacks. 24,000 malicious third party apps every day. A new hacking attempt is done every 39 seconds and over 50% of IOT's endpoints have been hacked. 1 million security alerts are seen daily by over a quarter of security or over a quarter of security teams. $67 billion connected endpoints by 2025, around 300% increase in cyber crimes during COVID-19, with 97% of cyber attacks are through endpoints, and over 6,000 vendors created point-to-point -point security gaps, and 30% of employees have opened a phishing mail, 79% of employees use security work hands, with more than 4 million cybersecurity skills uh, gap globally and 60% of enterprise have been victims of IoT attacks. And you see that cybersecurity is massive for BlackBerry, which is a good thing. That realm itself, as technology keeps advancing, there is a lot of gap in there. So BlackBerry is an Internet of Things market leader with more than 500 million endpoints protected, more than 804 million ending cash investments with a net cash of $439 million, 74 million in free cash flow in uh, year 2021, and 175 million cars protected by QNX, Around 23 out of the 25 top EV automakers with 73% plus 27 basis points of year 2021 gross margins and 11% of year 2021 operating margins with an AI and machine learning industry leader for driven cybersecurity. Now, business transformation from hardware to software. Now, from the hardware part, you're looking at the software is only 3%. Now that itself out of 3%, 98% of that is a significant shift to its business model and a financial profile of BlackBerry. So you get to see that shift itself is massive. Now, if you were to look from 2014 to 2021, the revenue there went from $6.8 billion towards $0.9 billion. Now, BlackBerry has undergone a significant shift in its business model and financial profile. Now, if you were to look into the adjusted EBI TDA, you're looking at $194 million in 2014 to $167 million in 2021 with the FCF going from negative $393 million to $74 million. So you see, even though the revenue has decreased substantially, their adjusted EBI TDA percentage has increased also exponentially. Now, in terms of 2022 revenue reporting, you're looking into cybersecurity and Internet of Things software and services with licensing and others, including intellectual property, uh, service access fees, and technology licensing there too. Now, in terms of the Internet of Things, this goes under smart homes, smart cars, smart cities, and cloud services. 
Now, others as well, in terms of automotive conversion trends, including autonomous vehicles, whether it's in level two to five, digitization via connection, auto mobility for ride share, etc., and electrification. Now, the impacts are cars becoming smarter, software is reaching more safety critical parts of the cars, and an increasing portion of new cars have a significant software component with an increased need of cybersecurity. Now, the Internet of Things for BlackBerry IV. Vehicle data, BlackBerry IV, vehicle applications, and all this is controlled by environmental data as well into the BlackBerry IV system. Now, BlackBerry IV's digital ecosystem. It basically lies in between the digital ecosystem and application developers and everything in between here. I'm not going to go through the details. But next thing here is they have strategic alliance for co-developments with uh, Amazon Web Services. So trusted leader in automotive safety and security, deep knowledge of embedded automotive software systems, an exceptional track record of delivery integration and support, leading global cloud provider with a culture of innovation, unmatched machine learning and enterprise IoT capabilities, and proven builder of successful developer ecosystem. Now, cybersecurity for BlackBerry Spark. Moving on, you get to see the Spark suite. Now, this one here is an interactive layers of uh, information, whether it's including endpoint protection, continuous authentication, UAM Expert Express Suite that has both device management and secure productivity apps. So you get to feel a little bit like Palantir, but a little bit more mature in terms of the company itself uh, being older. And as well, that the, the massive move from 2014 till now really feels that it's more focused into cybersecurity and Internet of Things rather than hardware devices. So why unify endpoints and security data management? Well, there's currently too many vendors. 70% of organization will have a unified console. Mobiles are vulnerable. Now, 50% of organization will have a mobile threat defense. And endpoints are changing. 40% of workers use wearable as a primary device. Now, what is Zero Trust? This is an AI security system where the components work in concert as a foundation for a zero or concert uh, as a foundation for a zero trust enterprise security architecture. Now, cybersecurity for the BlackBerry ad hoc. You get to see that they are working on multiple things, not just one system at once. So this is the BlackBerry ad hoc incorporations with BlackBerry Alert. So keep your people safe, reduce its downtime. Uh, get clear time critical feedback and minimize disruptions. Now, the critical event management and notifies anyone anywhere on any device, gathers critical information from people to achieve uh, situational awareness and gain real time visibility into the status and location of your personnel, as well as communicate and collaborate with other organizations at ease. Now, it also gives you critical event management system, uh, end to end crisis management plans, etc. Now, cybersecurity for BlackBerry, uh, this is Secure Suite, or I guess Secure, but without an R, Secure Suite. And you're looking into this one here, it has secure and voice managing, uh, messaging and systems, uh, server networks, control metadata, security certifications, contact verification, and encrypted communications. So I'm guess, guess, guessing this is something similar to the BlackBerry Messenger we had that was supposedly being secure. Now, this one here is a more of a messaging app or software between the enterprise itself and that is easy to use, uh, that is very secure and also uh, encrypted. Now, investments highlights. Top tier partners, including Vodafone, Microsoft, uh, Land Rover, Jaguars, uh, Amazon Web Services, NVIDIA, Intel, Denso, Bosch, Samsung, Bell, Panasonic, the list goes on. So 18 out of the 20 G G20 governments, those are partners, 9 out of the 10 largest global banks, and 9 out of 10 top automakers. So in terms of 2022, growth drivers is equal to cybersecurity. They have plans to upgrade UAM install base to Spark, new logos through cybersecurity suite, and expand CEM into the enterprise. Now, continuing auto recovery, continuing design wins, in, in, especially as well in EV, greater content per vehicle, it's like ASP, and growth in GEM. Continuing product development, ongoing discussion with OEM in tiers one, launched IV innovation fund, and built IV advisors council. And in terms of the primary focus is software and service growth. Now, in terms of the total addressable market, you're getting to see that the Internet of Things gives you around $15 billion in 2021 and cyber around $30 billion by 2025. 
that is expected to almost double to $45 billion in the Internet of Things and $44 billion in cyber. Now, in terms of recurring software product revenue, the goal is around 90%. The current actual is 90%. The gross margin here is around 73%. The goal is 80 to 85, with adjusted EBI TDA currently being 16%. The goal is 25 to 30%. Now, in terms of their financials itself, you get to see that it kind of ranges. The gross profit did see a bit of an increase or actually stabilization, a bit of increase later on in 2020 and then dipped in quarter one, 2021, quarter two, 2021, three and four. These are more estimated from my understanding. I mean, we still didn't get to 2021. You're looking into a gross profit that is a little bit hazy in that sense. But keep in mind that this is actually estimates from my understanding, at least. So you get to see that in 2021, they're expecting $643 million in gross profit as compared to 763 in 2020. Now, I guess part of it goes to coronavirus, but the net loss they're expecting to be around $1.1 billion in 2021 in comparison to around $152 million in 2020. Now, in general, we need to look at other things, including their fundamentals, uh, some of their uh, short ratios, etc. Now, here we look at the short ratio or short flow to be around 8%. So it's not a short squeeze of a sense, but this company has been a lot has had a lot of attention from Reddit, uh, retail, etc. And it's definitely pushing forward because of that at this point. Now, you get to see the current adjusted or BlackBerry current ratio or uh, based on timeline in terms of historical one, and you get to see that, well, the numbers did see a more, more of a drop by 2019, especially into 2020, but it is going towards a recovery at this point. Now, in terms of something like net income, you get to see that the net income from 2013 towards 2021 anticipated is that you're seeing a massive push from that level itself. This is net income from discontinued operations, by the way. Now, in this sense, we need to take a look as well into their other fundamentals, for instance, their EPS, etc. So I found Finvis to actually be very useful. So in terms of the EPS this year, you're looking at a negative 616%. Now, I'm not exactly sure how they got even to that. I'm guessing that this is a reported loss into this year. But EPS next year is exp expected to be two times double from where we're at right now. So that's definitely a bullish thing. Now, the price over book and price over sales for a security company and the software company, this is all acceptable, even though it's 10 and 5 respectively. But I've seen a lot of these companies like Microsoft, Apple, etc. go all the way to 40. Tesla, I think right now is around, I think around 40 as well in price over sales. Uh, we can double check right here. And you get to see the Tesla currently in price over sales is actually 16. Well, that's because it also dropped significantly from around uh, 900 when the last time I checked it. But the price of her book is 25. And you get to see that the current numbers for BlackBerry, for instance, is technically cheaper than of Tesla's. But you're comparing apples with avocados. It's completely different. Now, other things I do want to take a look at is institutional buyers. Now, from an institutional buyer perspective, of course, a lot of these institutions are very bullish into it and they're adding more shares. So before moving on, if you'd like to see more contents like this, make sure you click that subscribe button at the bottom right corner, turn your bell notification buttons on, and drop the video a like. If you'd like to join our uh, Discord, it's in the description below. Let's move on towards technical analysis. Now, from a technical analysis standpoint, don't get me wrong, this is actually very bullish on every point, but you need to understand that there's a movement behind this. It's retail. This is not mainly investment bankers betting onto this one in that sense. Now, if it was offered to them, probably they would be the ones selling at 20 bucks, shorting, and then buying back into the 14 bucks. That sounds like an amazing deal for them. But a lot of these people actually believe in BlackBerry. And in a sense, you get to see that in every single case here. They're very bullish. The technical analysis point of view are very bullish. The 80X sitting at 3884 shows a very strong trend. Volume percent R is not even overbought in this level. And the MACD is strong, it's a little bit kind of meeting a resistance because it is actually meeting resistance on the price point action and momentum is very bullish. Now, stochastic fast and stochastic slow both are telling you to be careful for the next support. And if it does break it, you might want to consider selling. Moving average bands. This one here, don't get much of it other than the moving average bands are actually going upwards, indicating a bullish move. Now, from the Fibonacci retracements, what you're seeing here is a significant support level at the 1371, below there 1015 and below there 439. 
significant resistances, 1659, 1947, 2357, and 2877. Now, from a price line action, keep in mind that this current su uh, support we're at is at the 1535. Below there, you're looking down to the 1450. Below there, you're looking at 1389. Below there, 1255. Going down to 967 and then 876. Going to 787 and then down to 653. Current resistances, a very strong one, aligns at 1584. Above there, 1665. And above there, 1795. Above there, 1948. And then going up to the $25 mark. Now, let's take a look into what's happening in after hours. After hours, what you're seeing right now is that the price point itself is actually holding up, increasing just a tad to 1610. Now, from my own point of view, I do think that this stock will probably attempt back to break that 1639 level, and then from there on, going to the 1783, and then perhaps to the 21 mark. But if it does reach there, you can expect a lot of people to sell. And if it doesn't break into the $25 on the same day, it will probably bounce back right down. And it's going to hurt a lot of people. But from my, what I'm looking at is there's a significant line I don't want it to see cross again, the 1487. And I think if it does cross there, you probably need to be keeping an eye on to 1404. Because if it does drop below there, you might actually be very much in trouble. Now, to go and get me wrong, BlackBerry, I'm very bullish onto it in the longer term. If you're keeping this investment for 10 years, you'll probably prosper well for returns. What do you think about this ticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like, and have a wonderful day. Now, if you made it this far into the video, I do recommend that you go ahead and join our Discord server. There's a lot of amazing folks in here. Uh, we do a lot of discussions here into the trading floor throughout the day. A lot of people are in there, and we do ask questions. You can ask me uh, any question you would like on there. Uh, we do post research and DDs, and we hold weekly uh, chat sessions. And we also do have a lounge in there. So make sure to actually join that and join the fun there. Have a wonderful day and a good one.